Yo yo, to all of you that made it to lesson 20, give yourself a pat on the back. We covered a lot of programming concepts in less than three hours, and we also have a project to show for it. Make sure to share your project with your mom or your friends to let them know that you're well on your way to becoming a developer. I was planning on teaching you guys how to use tkinter, which is a tool that allows you to build user interfaces with Python. I have personally never used it before and I took a stab at learning it. However, my code got really messy and I'd rather we spend our time learning things that would help progress our careers. So if you do want to build UI with Python, feel free to check out tkinter. But I do want to mention that our goal in this bootcamp is to learn as much as possible, focusing on the things necessary to get us hired. Hence, let's move forward and start our intro to web development. Before we do any coding, let me explain quickly how the internet works. Cool, so on the left we have a user, and in order for the user to interact with the internet, they need a client, where basically a client is just a laptop, or a phone, or any device that allows you to connect to the internet. So let's draw a straight line here, and anything on the right side of this line will be the internet. Or you can call this the cloud, or however you want to refer to the internet. Cool, so let's pretend we want to go to youtube.com. So what happens is our browser will make a request to the internet. And then the internet will talk to the DNS server. And the DNS server will convert youtube.com into an IP address, something like 208.65, etc. You can also think of this as looking up someone's name in a phone book and getting their phone number. Once we have the IP address, we can locate where the server exists. We can follow this address to find the server that hosts youtube.com. Now that we found the server, all we have to do is ask for the files to render the website. And then basically, these files are sent back to the client, and then the browser will use these files to display the website. And that's basically a dumbed down version of how the internet works. If you want a better explanation, feel free to search around on YouTube. So in general, a website consists of these files, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. For today's lesson, we're going to focus on HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language. This file is used to tell your browser how to render the website. And it contains text content, which is what you see, markup, which is how the page is styled, and it can reference to other documents, which can be images or videos. And lastly, it also links to other pages. So let's head on over to replit.com. Now let's create a new project. Select HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Give it a name. So let's name this Web Development 101. Click Create. Cool, so now we have a different replit. On the left, you'll see files. And in this directory, you will see index.html, script.js, and style.css. So for today, we're just going to focus on index.html, and we will cover the other files in a future lesson. Cool. So inside this file, we have HTML. The first line here just specifies that this is an HTML file. And HTML is basically just made up of tags, which looks like this, where it has an opening brace and a closing brace. So there are two kinds of tags one being a container tag, and it basically looks like this, where it can contain zero or more tags inside it. And just like a parenthesis, you need a opening and closing tag. Next, we have a single tag, where it doesn't need a closing tag. So let's get rid of line two, and now let's click run to see what happens. Nice, so we see hello world here, which is basically our website. I know there's a lot of code here, but you're probably wondering why we only see hello world. Well, if you look at line 10, you'll see hello world. Let's change this to hello Vincent. And now let's click run again. And here, as you can see, we see hello Vincent. So basically we can change the values inside the tags and the website will be rendered differently. And just like that, congratulations, you just wrote your first website. I hope you're excited. We're going to cover a lot of cool stuff in the next few lessons. So make sure to like and subscribe so that way you don't miss out on the next lesson.